my name is uh, Itzhak Mohaim. I'm, uh, first of all, uh, I'm married to my beautiful wife Maya, and we have four children. I was born in Israel, uh, second generation, and I live in. Uh, I was born in this city, Rishon Lezion, and uh, I was raised as a secular, secular Jew. Uh, right now, I'm a pastor of a congregation named Davidski, and also a ministry called Live Army uh, Music Academy together with the House of Prayer. I was born in 1975. Life was a bit simpler than now. But at the age of uh, 17, 18, I was joining to the army. And then when I came out of the army, suddenly life was just in front of me and I had to make decisions. But in that point, I started to think that um, there isn't anything worth in life actually to live it. Uh, because I saw uh, in myself uh, sin, I saw in myself that I'm not so good as people think that I am. And I saw also on others the same situation. And I saw that uh, lots of people, you know, cheating on each other and there's no loyalty. My parents were divorced when I was 13. So I experienced the separation and stuff. And I didn't have faith on marriage, didn't have faith on life. When I started to um, feel really uh, desperate and uh, sad inside, uh, one of my friends, he was my best friend, uh, we had a talk, it was in the, in the age of 24, and um, we, we decided to start using drugs. Because inside of me, it's like I said, okay, because I don't think about getting married, I'm not going to do anything, let's just enjoy life and uh, maybe kill myself in the age of 27 by drugs or something. So at that point, I started using uh, drugs. And in the age of 27, uh, something happened to me. It was one night, specific night, that I felt very, very sad. And uh, I was crying a lot. It was, uh, nobody saw me, I was in my house alone. And I was crying a lot with pain. It was not a normal cry. I was afraid of death, suddenly. And I, I knew that I'm in chains. And after two hours, I was on my knees crying and I started to talk with God. I talked with him like he's in the, in the house. Like I know he's listening to me. And I just uh, asked him questions, and I was very sad, and I was shouting at him, complaining. And, I, and uh, generally speaking, I was demanding him to come. I said, you just have to come, and I spoke, I spoke vocally loud. You just have to share the truth with me. You know I'm a sinner. I, don't need to, I, don't, I cannot fool you. And you know what's going on, and I don't really understand what it's like. How can you create something like that? I said to myself, this is not wise. We are suffering. This is suffering. I, can, I cannot uh, deal with temptation. I'm telling you now. And what is the solution? I mean, I don't trust any person to tell me the truth. Not Orthodox, not secular Jews, not philosophers. No one can come to me outside of sin. I know everybody is a sinner. I just knew it. And I cannot believe any book because I know people write books. So you cannot, you cannot convince me through a person or a book. You have to do something. If you exist, you just have to do something. And I remember I said to him, uh, in this point, I'm telling you, I want the truth, not any fantasy. Mm -hmm. And don't tell me, when I come to you in judgment, if you exist in judgment, don't tell me I didn't invite you to come and just tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. This is the point where I stop everything and I tell you, come and tell me the truth. And this is like, there's a scripture about it that David is saying, now I know. Um, God is close to anyone who calls him, mm -hmm. but only for those who call him sincerely. Mm -hmm. This conversation, I, will, I know inside of me, and he knows, that I was serious. I just, I just wanted the truth. And then there was a lot of crying and shouting, and I, uh, I was confused. But I said another thing that was very interesting, that I think is the work of the Spirit. I said, I give you authority to come into my heart, and I give you authority to come into my mind. Just come inside. Come. Come. Just come. And uh, in that point, where everything was settled down after four hours of agony and conversation with God, I, I was tired. And I went to sleep. I woke up. I remember walking, going, preparing myself to go to school. And I'm thinking to myself, something is different. In my mind, this is not Isaac. I, I feel like I'm not Isaac anymore. I went to the mirror. I looked at myself and I said, what is going on? Something happened. Definitely something happened. I don't know. I feel like I'm born again or something. And I, and I, and I immediately, I, I thought about the conversation I had with God. And I said, he listened.
just another important point to say, I didn't know anything about Jesus. This is like the God of Abraham, what I was talking about. At that point, I just walked to, uh, to the bus, went to school, and I, and I noticed that there is a new flow of thoughts in my mind that I was never taught. I, I know myself thinking, and I'm not thinking like, like that. Lots of revelations and wisdom and goodness and the understandings just comes on me. And I said, what is this? I know it's not me thinking. So who's thinking, who's talking to my mind with my voice from now on? And I said, I know I gave him authority to come. So he comes in my voice. And I said, okay, I can recognize your voice. I can recognize when it's me and when it's you. So we can have a fellowship now. And even more than that, suddenly the physical sensation starts to come. Suddenly I got excited when I talked to him and he said something funny or revelation. I was goosebumps all over my body and I felt a presence and I don't, I don't know what is presence back then. One big revelation that he gave me from the beginning. 24-7 I'm with you. I'm talking to you, looking at you, available for you, only for you, 24-7, with 100% attention. And I can do the same thing with another person at the same time. After these five months, uh, I needed money for the apartment and a girl came. But she came, then we discussed the terms and then we talked about God. And I said, you know, it's very easy to talk with God. And actually you can hear him. You just need to do that and that and that. And he will come. And she did that. And when she did that, he came, he, she, she listened to his voice. And she said, I, can, I, can, I know what you're talking about. And she was changed so easily, you know. And we fell in love. And I lost the money for the apartment. But we got uh, married. And then there was a point after six months together, I said to my wife, Maya, listen, maybe we should read the Bible. <laughs> And she said, yeah, let's, let's read together. And I read, I read every day a portion with my wife. Then we come to the point of destruction of the temple and the prophets, and you don't know what to do. So I decided to ask God, what's now? Then I went to, uh, to uh, my walk, went to school. I came back home. I opened the TV, and I saw a movie. And I didn't want to change the channel because I was so tired. So I, changed, I stayed with the channel, and the movie was Miriam, the mother of Yeshua, Miriam, the mother of Jesus. And I said, well, it's not for me, this movie, but I'm so tired, let's see, who is this guy? And when I saw the movie, immediately I felt uh, not comfortable in my seat because I, I see him coming into a synagogue, saying the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I never knew those things. Suddenly he speaks about things, and uh, everything he says is already in me. I know this wisdom, I know this way of thinking, and I felt like, what's going on? And I looked up and said, Father, do you see what I see? What's going on? What, is it you? What's going on? It's the same. It's the same wisdom. It's the same power, the same authority. And then when the movie stopped, my wife came and I, I said to Maya, Maya, sit down. We have to talk. <laughs> I think Yeshua is like the Messiah or something. Something is going on and maybe we're going to have problems. I don't know, but we have to check this thing. And then uh, she trusted me. At that point, Yeshua came. You know, but I went back for a walk next day, and they hired a new guy, a new cook, never hold a knife in his life, which is very weird. He's 19 years old, walked in the kitchen, and I had to give him a lesson how to do things. The first thing I asked him is, do you know Yeshua? And he says, um, oh, well, he's a wise guy, wise rabbi with students. I have a New Testament in spoken English in my house. If you want, I will bring it to you. I never read it. He was not a believer. Next day, he bring it to me. And I started to read Matthew, John, Luke, Mark, and I read it in English. And I'm in shock from the things. I read Matthew and I said to Maya, Maya, listen, it's like the best thing I ever read in my life. And then I read Mark and I said, listen, Mark is the best thing I ever read in my life. And then I, I read Lucas and I said, no, forget about it. Lucas is like the big picture. Then I read uh, John and I said, no, 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 no. John is like the, it's like the best, best thing I ever read. Though I understood the four Gospels are amazing. And this guy was fired from job after two weeks. So this is how the Gospel came uh, into my life. And then after four months of reading the New Testament, just being believers alone, thinking we are alone, suddenly I go back to work and I found it out that in another kitchen there is an Ukrainian guy. <clears throat> His name is Marat. And I go to the kitchen, I feel prompt to ask him, Marat, do you know Yeshua? He said, uh, yes, do you know Yeshua? He was afraid I'm checking him as a missionary. He said, I said, yes, of course. I said, he's Jewish. Why do you ask me if I know him? So he checked me for two weeks. Every day I used to come, he asked me a question. And then when he saw that I'm really a believer, he said, you know, Isaac, there is more believers in the land. I said, yeah? 
He said, yes, do you want to come to Jaffa and to Bet Emanuel and to join a session? And I said, yes, why not? And this is how I met the body. And they saw that I'm uh, already uh, mature, and they didn't understand, how can you be mature? You've never been in a church. I said, I'm walking with him. I'm walking with him for already a year already. You know? And I'm thinking to myself, can you imagine how many young people did the same thing I did? And nobody knows about them. And they are everywhere in Israel because of the resurrection, because of the prayers that you pray, and the body is praying.